All right. All right. That's right. We're in the house. Black Power. This is the General Saw Ross Susan Setti. And I'm black right. at y'all ass again All right. That's with right. this real fucking in talk. The house. That's right. Damn, I'm always forgetting to goddamn hit the mute on my motherfucking YouTube. That's a damn shame. But that's all right. Sometimes niggas need to hear that shit. That remix. That Black Power remix. Let me fire up some of this good incense. So that so we can commune with the ancestors. Oh, that's that top notch shit too. Woo! This ain't that dollar store shit y'all be getting. Mm, mm, mm. One goddamn incense had his whole house smelling like heaven. Hold on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We in the house. We black in the house. Oh, damn, that shit didn't light all the way. Hold on. We about to get real tonight, family. We about to get real tonight, family. Yes, we are. Yeah. What my incense hold? Hold on, let me get what that incense hold there. Hold on. Hold on. All right, I'm black in the house. I'm black in the house. I'm gonna have, I'm going hard for the next four days. I'm gonna put my topics in the, uh, I'm gonna just make them up, I'm gonna make up the, uh, you know, the events and have them up there for y'all so, you know, you could just be ready because we about to get this, this work in straight up. Ain't no days off. Ain't no days off. I got a million and one things I need to say to my family out there. You understand what I'm saying? So ain't no lighting up. We tightening up. That's right. Let me get my notes. Yeah. We dealing with the magical dwarfs of Africa. You see today. And we are dealing with the holy land of Poon today. You understand what I'm saying? This is a powerful, powerful lecture you know what i'm saying understanding you know because this is really the core of the beginning of the nile valley and so if you ain't got this you ain't you it's impossible for you to understand egypt and nubia and you don't understand the interior of africa because both egypt and nubia descend up out of the south it started in the south and then progressively, it came down the river to where we know of, of today as Egypt and Nubi. Okay? We had a very powerful lecture yesterday. Me and Pharaoh, the uh, Catholic Church exposed. You know, I, you know, during you know the course of me teaching on YouTube, I break it down in, in increments like I always do, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I like it in increments, you know what I'm saying? Because it gave me an opportunity to focus on, you know, a, you, know no, you know, a small portion at a time, you know what I'm saying? When you, when you get that high power shit, that shit just be bop, 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 it be coming. So you gotta be, you gotta be showing up ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Now, the, we say dwarf. Matter of fact, let me make sure all my family is in the house before I get started. Because I know family, oh, damn, y'all just be run, rushing up in there. Look at that. Uh-oh. The God is in the house. Moderator's in the house. Mr. Bing Bob was, was popping, God. Was popping out there. Okay, let me make sure everything is clear. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me put that brother in. Let me make sure to all my moderators out there, you know, a lot of those, uh, you know, them comments. What up with Ty in the house? Make sure y'all, uh, you know, okay, the family that's out there, you know, got a comment that need to be okay. Look out. Look out for the family. Make sure they get a chance, you know, because that this dumbass, uh, you know, this dumbass uh, YouTube and shit. They be goddamn, uh, you know, uh, flagging some of the messages and shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I I took the shit off, but, you know, that's okay. I ain't worried about that. Sometimes some of them niggas need to be flagged. But a lot of the family just giving love, and we want to make sure that, uh, you know, they get an opportunity to be, oh, uh, the family out there tripping. You know, they get an opportunity, you know, to be heard in the chat. Now, uh, again, you know, to get the warm up even before we, because I got a lot of powerful shit today. You understand what I'm saying? And this is right here going to give you the basis of understanding ancient Egypt. You can't understand ancient Egypt until you understand the South. You see what I'm saying? Even when you're looking at the uh, Pharaoh's crown, you know, when you see the tall crown, and that's the crown that Osiris wear. That's the crown of the South. You see what I'm saying? And that was the preeminent crown. You see what I'm saying? To show you that the South was preeminent, okay? Understandably. Now, uh, when you're talking about and I always, and I got to, you know, I'm, I'm tightening up my skills this year. You know, I'm, a, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm in, you know, I'm doing so many lectures that, you know, I have to come back and really, you know, get back into the older lectures and, you know, and sharpen my skills like never before. I've never lost nothing. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't just expand it into so many damn lectures. You know what I'm saying? Because the people's always talking about said he said he with motherfucker. I got more lectures, goddamn it, than you know most nigga got verses. You know, you know talking about MCs that got verses. I got more lectures than most major MCs got verses, nigga. I'm just being real about it. You know what I'm saying? I because I understand that while I'm giving a lecture on one thing, I always know it's some connecting lectures because it's going to be questions in a, a, a particular area that's going to bring and shed light on the lecture that I'm giving. You know, so it's always like one lecture leads to five, six damn other lectures. You know what I'm saying? And so I always, you know, have to extend off into different areas and that's my growth. You know what I'm saying? So you know, but when we talking about the land of Poon, okay, a lot of people look to Somalia, you know, the Horn of Africa as the land of Poon. Now, I always say that, you know, there's three major uh, civilizations uh, of the Nile, and it technically is four. And, you know, I got to quit, you know, you know, leaving Poon out because Poon is also one of those civilizations, you know, and it's documented because the ancient Egyptians gave verification and proof that they went to the land of Poon Hatshepsut. If you go to the funerary temple of Hatshepsut, which I did go to, you will see the expedition that during her, her, uh, her rule that she sent, you know, a major fleet down to Poon to retrieve uh, frankincense and myrrh, animals, particular exotic animals that was down in that area. You got a chance to see uh, the queen of Poon, the Poon. And it was critical about that, which I will show. You know what I'm saying? is that they had the same cultural practice. So when we look at Egypt, 
we have to understand that the culture that you see in Egypt was the exact culture in variations in Nubia, in Ethiopia, all the way down to what we know today as Somalia and the Great Lakes region, including Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, all around that Great Lakes uh, region. And we're going to get off into that because that's the main, that's the uh, world's first cultural industrial hub, okay? Even before Egypt, you know, hundreds of thousands of years before Egypt, that was a cultural hub. Let me move this in, boy. I see all kind of, let me move, you know, it smells good though, but let me move this, this incense out the way. And see, we got to understand this. You see, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be no, and the Egyptians knew this. And people who try to steal our culture from us, you know, you got, you got, uh, you know, you arm, it, you arm in your. This is armament for the mind. You understand what I'm saying? Because when some, when we can lay this out and show it to you, you understand what I'm saying? You could go back behind this information. Okay, continuing to do your research, you know, evolving and developing within self. See, it's one thing to get wisdom, it's another thing to get understanding. You feel what I'm saying? Understanding is when you go behind the teacher, go and do your own personal research to prove whether what I said tonight is right or wrong. God damn it, prove me wrong. Anyone, anybody out there? Uh, I even got an email from that brother. Say the little uh, professor, say he got a PhD in biblical whatever. I wouldn't give a goddamn if he had 200 motherfucking PhD. When he ready to come see General Sai soon said he tell that motherfucker sign on the dotted line. Because I'm ready for any battle. Uh, you know, I'm on, I'm on a big, I'm on a big Christian. I'm on a little Christian. He said he got a PhD, but goddamn it, brain, get you a PhD. Uh, whatever other kind of D and stack them motherfuckers on top of each other and come see me. That'll be the last time you ever see that motherfucker. I'm going to bury his ass with all the PhDs and biblical knowledge. I'm going to bury his ass on that day. And like I say, I know this is my major platform where I'm just, you know, I'm raw with the knowledge. I ain't holding shit up because this is a, a revolution and I'm a rebel. And I don't have no time to dress up for no nigga or no cracker or nobody else. I'm going to be me. That's what a rebel is. So you know what I'm saying? I don't have no time to dress up for This ain't Mr. Dress Up Hour, nigga. This the truth hour. And I like, I like my truth raw. I don't like nobody to dress my. That's what's wrong with you, nigga. You done got so soft. Y'all niggas want to get, you know, y'all want to get to water down shit and Oh, yeah, and, and, and claim that's, uh, you know, that's intellectual and all. That ain't no goddamn intellectual. Nigga, you just soft. That ain't got nothing to do with intellectualism. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to give up your emotion and your natural uh, expression, you understand, to be a good nigga. Okay? You don't have to do that. You understand what I'm saying? But you soft, motherfucker, because... You know, we gorillas, you know what I'm saying? We soldiers and gorillas, as my brothers is out there. And so they don't like to see us in our natural state. You know, when you come up in that, in them, where the mountain gorillas is, you know, because they defending them, them female gorillas. Uh, you don't even see the goddamn gorilla. But all you see is them goddamn trees moving and shit. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker rush down up there. That's what we are. You see what I'm saying? That's who we are. You know, and we cannot, you know, tame that spirit of warrior spirit in us. And see, most motherfuckers don't want to see us in that state because they know goddamn well they can't deal with us like that. You know what I'm saying? They know that. We, 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 we are, are passionate people. That's how we do. And that don't mean we're not getting the message across. We're getting the message across. I'm not just going, you know, yell. You nigga, they, niggas ain't just yelling. We expressing ourselves. You understand? In a vibrant tone, nigga, that nobody else could reach. 
And most of the time, nigga, that energy alone, punk a motherfuckers, weak scholars and shit, punking they at. Because if they was passionate about, they wouldn't just fold like they do. You understand what I'm saying? So, so like Kyle said, nigga, you know, I'm, when I attack, I attack everything. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, they, he, you know, they ask Kyle and say, well, why you attack the person, the man's personal being? He's talking about when he get on the cracker. He say, nigga, I don't just attack the, the train. Nigga, I attack the tracks that the train runs on. Nigga, I don't just attack the plane. Nigga, I attack the uh, fueling depot. Nigga, before they put the motherfucking fuel in that motherfucker, anything attached to the machine of, you know, of the military machine that's going against me, bitch, I'm attacking everything connected to it. So, nigga, ain't no dressing up and trying to be a soft nigga. We coming hard today. Okay, we we losing too many out there to be soft. So, but again, you know, I can be a silent assassin, you know, and I, I, I do customize ass whooping for anybody out there that want to get one. You understand what I'm saying? Don't, I, I'm not, if, if it's the right motherfucker, I'll be the silent assassin on that day. Okay, I can be this, you know, I could be the goddamn Gorilla, I could be the silverback gorilla and nigga come down there and be no chance. Or I could be the silent assassin at the same damn time and do just as much damage. Okay? I can do that. Today, again, we're dealing with uh we're dealing with the magical dwarf. Now, I did that for a particular reason. Now, the family in Africa are not called, called dwarves. You know, we call them twat, okay? And, you know, they got various names. And we the only people that got a branch of our people that's small like that. Other people have what you call dwarves, and it could be one individual. But we have a whole uh, particular branch of the African race that's small. And then sometimes it, that, that little small twat can pop right up in your family. You see what I'm saying? You know, little cousin, about four, y'all, anybody got a cousin out there? About four, eight and shit. <laughs> four, 11, I got a couple of cousins like that. Like four, 11 and shit. I say, damn, you know, one of my mama's first cousins, you know, her name Nicolette, and she four, 10. You know what I'm saying? Short as hell, like, damn, where the hell you get that from? You know what I'm saying? So we all had that twat in us. And then you got a tall, you know, giant ass person in your family. So, but we are, we got a branch of the family that is the oldest, uh, and it's one of the older branches of our people. You know, when they talking about Lucy, see y'all got, we about to get on that evolution shit. Wherever we got to go to dig in a motherfucking chest, that's where we going. Because y'all been, you know, the white man been, you know, been using all of that garbage. You know, you know, evolution and Darwinism, that's the basis of eugenics, where they was trying to wipe us off the goddamn planet, saying that, you know, we were uh, 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 close to the monkey and our brains wasn't fully developed. That's eugenics coming up out of, you know, that dumb shit that you call... Uh, that you call uh, Darwinism and uh, evolution. You see what I'm saying? You can't get nothing from this crazy man. Nothing. You understand? Because everything going to be at the demise of who you are as the gods and goddesses of the damn universe. And that's exactly what you are. And I'm not going to let you underachieve on my watch. You can call you, I'm going to refer to you as the god and goddess of this goddamn universe, and that's exactly what you are. And just like that sun is in a divine rotation around this universe to provide us with life and light on this planet, warmth for the vegetation to, you know, provide us with the nutrient. And when I that damn sun, we just as divine, you got a just as much of a divine responsibility in this damn universe 
as that son. And if you fail to do your divine responsibility and rule on this planet as the divine lineage of creation, then just like if that son moved out of his rotation, God damn it, we would be in despair. The reason why we in despair right now, because you, have, us, have not claimed our divine responsibilities as the true and rightful rulers on this damn planet. We the elders, and not only we the elders, we not even the elders, because I'm not related to these motherfuckers at all. But we the oldest, you understand? Only I don't want to say we elders, because that means we relate. We ain't related to these motherfuckers. We the rightful rulers on this planet, been here before any of these motherfuckers even got here. You see what I'm saying? There is no birth record to our people. We, we don't know of a time when we did not exist on this planet. All that other shit is mystery and magic or we evolved. We ain't never goddamn evolved. What is, what was, what will be. You understand what I'm saying? I told motherfuckers that if they evolve, and I'm going to prove tonight that we didn't evolve, okay? In, a, in, a, in, a, in, in dealing with this topic, because we're going to see that the Trois went all over the planet. And just like they look in Africa, they look over in Asia right now today, that's how they look, okay? So it, it, how is it that they evolve when they still look the same as when before they left Africa, okay? We're going to get on that today. We're going to get on that today. So all these Negroes out here with all these mythologies, I got on Instagram today and got on these Aboriginal niggas because it's, it's a goddamn winter blast all across the goddamn country going down to the coldest goddamn temperatures of the decade, of the, of the decade. You see what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself, I say these niggas say they original to an icebox. They, you might as well go over the fucking Netherlands and goddamn Switzerland and goddamn, because if you come across the goddamn longitude and go across into Europe, nigga, you be in goddamn Scandinavia and goddamn Northern Russia. You understand what I'm saying? So how in the fuck can you might as well say we we native and aboriginal to Siberia and goddamn Scandal Scandinavia, some goddamn where Switzerland and fucking Denmark. Wake your silly ass up, nigga. You why would you claim the word? And nigga talking about we aboriginal to the whole. We ain't aboriginal to the whole motherfucking earth. Everything just like that song got a, 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 a sequence, a divine sequence. If it move out of, and everything on this planet got a habitat, motherfucker, you ain't, you, you can't go any and every, you got a divine habitat, okay? And our habitat as children of the sun is in those land masses that takes in the most sun. You no know, fuck is you gonna go say you aboriginal to the goddamn North Pole, nigga, you might as well be a Viking or some goddamn body. You ain't no goddamn African, nigga. You's a Viking. So you got to get your, y'all got to get your weight up and accept the highest ideals of our people. You scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel of history, nigga, claiming shit that ain't even uh, worth even claiming. What the fuck is you claiming? Yeah, we run the earth, nigga. But you, the, the, the throne in the most divine part of this earth is Africa. And you niggas is, you know, y'all diminishing the, the divinity of Africa by even, you know, taking other land masses and making them e equal with the mother holy land. See, you wrong in that. If you go into a goddamn Jew, he going to say Israel is my holy land. If you go to a goddamn Arab, he going to say Mecca in Arabia is my holy land. If you go to a fucking Hindu, he going to say my holy land is the Ganges. Okay, you the only motherfucker out there that going to diminish your mother holy land and make all other lands equal with the mother land. Okay, that, that, that's a weak nigga. And I'm going to get on you weak niggas today. That's a weak nigga. And anybody that accepts some silly ass uh, fucking ideology, idiotic, idiotology, Ideology, because you're an idiot, okay? And you accept that, nigga, you're an idiot. You, you accept any goddamn thing. You got to wake up to that. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with our people, the Twa, who predominantly today live in the southern regions of Africa, the Congo, uh -huh, 
the Congo, the Congo, uh, right, right around the Great Lakes region of Africa. We're gonna deal with that. Powerful, a jewel of Africa, the Great Lakes region. And, and this is where we talking about the African, the Egyptians and the Nubians said, this is was the land of their gods. Now that's clear. This in all the understanding that the crackers and the Egyptology got out of trying to decipher our information, which they could not decipher today, never where they will, never will they decipher the sacred writings, is some indicators that's easily identifiable how the Egyptians worship Southern Africa. And they said that this is where in, in their carvings and in their understanding, in their hieroglyphs, they all, the areas of the South, they gave preeminence. Again, just looking at the throne of the Pharaoh was the Southern crown because they understood that the South took preeminence. And as you move further South, this was where they said was the land of their God. Now that's very powerful. And when we talk about best, and I'm about to get right on off into this, best and Ptah. See, Ptah, you in the house, baby. We talking about Ptah today. Talking about Ptah today, one of the most powerful deities ever mentioned. You understand what I'm saying? We understand that the metal netter is, you know, an expression that been created today, but we understand what it means. We understand it. So the divinity that we empower these words, I'm in full, you know, understanding and agreement with the people when they we're not taking away the divinity of our ancestors. So when we say Ptah, we know the power in that, that we apply to that. And we know who Ptah is. Ptah is the black uh, deity of creation. You see what I'm saying? I, who is identified with the cosmic melanin of the cosmos. He was the creator deity. And every time they ever shown Ptah, they shown him as a, well, they did show him as a blue god too. But his, his dominant color is black. Even in the temple of Abu Simbel, when he was in the Holy of Holies, you got, uh, you got, I think, four, was it three gods? It was three gods, Amen, Ramesses and Ptah. But when the sun hit up in the Holy of Holies, the, the statue of Ptah stayed in the darkness because he was the, he was the uh, creational God of the, of the cosmos, representing not, you know, be, the very beginning of creation. So he was always shown as black. And we have to understand that black in, in Africa is the color of divinity, okay? This ain't, we ain't, you know, you know, people say that black means death and all. No, nigga, to you it mean because you dumb. And your ass gonna get woke up out of that today. You see what I'm saying? Now, let me get, uh, I'm gonna start here so we can, we can get a, a geographical uh, uh, understanding of the area in which we are dealing with. And then I'm gonna jump over there into that twa, that uh, magical dwarfs in the Holy Land of Pum. You see what I'm saying? But we got to have a geographical understanding of where we're gonna be at today. Okay? Let's get this pop. Let's get this pop. Bingo. We're in the house. Matter of fact, let me get my monitor up. Let me get my monitor up. I know y'all mad out there. I'm, on, I'm looking at my uh, Instagram. I know them motherfuckers mad because I went in on that Aboriginal shit today. But somebody got to do it. Why not me? Somebody got to do it. Why not me? Let me get it. Let me get my monitor up, family. We're about to go in. We're looking at the Jews of Africa. Okay, you're looking at, at the top, you're looking at late Tanganyika. Now, what we got to be, what we got to understand, family, is that the, the Great Lakes of Africa is fresh water. Family, I thank you very much. Appreciate you always. 
okay? When you're looking at the Great Lakes region of Africa, let me see if I can get over here. Here, just back. You see what I'm saying? You see Lake Victoria, you see Lake Tanganyika. Lake Victoria is the second largest freshwater lake on the planet. Second, if I'm not mistaken, behind Lake Michigan. Over here, you got two, uh, the two largest freshwater uh, Great Lake region, okay? We talking about more than one, okay? The largest Great Lakes region is up in North America around uh, Michigan, okay? You got uh, your Lake your Huron, Lake Erie, Lake uh, Michigan, Lake Superior, and what the other one is? Is it Ottawa or some shit? Okay, I got to get the, uh, I used to know them all, all five. And the second Great Lakes uh, region is in Africa. And you're looking right at it. You see what I'm saying? Lake Victoria, was the, which is the second largest. And then you got Lake Tanganyika by volume is, uh, if it's not the first, it's the second largest by volume. Okay, Lake Victoria is the second by area. But when you're talking about depth, Lake Tanganyika is uh, deeper than Lake Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. It is. So it got much, it got more volume. And then you're talking about the length of Lake Tanganyika. I think it's a little longer than what this, uh, this particular map right here is showing. Then you got Lake um, Malawi or, or Maui. And then you got Lake Turkana and you got Lake uh, Kivu. Okay, all of that. And let me be clear about something right now. There is no Lake Victoria in Africa. But I can't c tell you uh, the other names because if I did, you wouldn't be able to find it on the map no goddamn way. And then each country that's surrounding these lakes got a particular name for the lake, you know, particular to that nation. So you can have four or five names for the lake. You So you can go in on your own and do some research on what them particular names is. But this is the hub of Africa. Even when you're talking about early humanity, okay? Even when you're talking... And for the reason why, first and foremost, you got fresh water. You got fresh water, okay? You ain't got to ask a motherfucker for nothing to drink. You got what you need. You see, that's substantial. And then not only the fresh water, but the varieties of fresh water fish. You see, the fresh water fish that, you know, is available to the people. And then just like, you know, you just like you need water, the animals need water. You see what I'm saying? And so if you want, you know, if you need some meat, you know what I'm saying? You need some meat, you can just go to the many times family go catch that shit at the river. Go catch it at the lake. Because you can always catch some down at the lake, you know, getting water. So, you know, a lot of people think, you know, there's no chickens in Africa, nigga. We got chickens. We got goddamn whatever you need. Some of you niggas can't come up off the hall. They got pigs in Africa, too. You can have any kind of burger you want, nigga. You can have you a, a rhinoceros burger, nigga. You can have you a giraffe burger, nigga. You can have any kind of got, goddamn rhinoceros burger. You know what I'm saying? You know, any kind of goddamn burger you want, nigga. You want you a gazelle sandwich, nigga. You can get whatever the fuck you want. So we got all kind of, uh, you know, animals and meat and shit in Africa. You got ducks and geese and whatever type of, you got all kind of fish and shit. And so it's ridiculous for people to believe that if they went back to Africa, you couldn't have the things that you probably enjoy today. Okay. You can cultivate anything in Africa that, that you want because you got more varieties of animals. You got more varieties of fish, and we're talking, again, freshwater fish. You're not talking about no salt water, nigga. You're talking about freshwater fish. So you can come right on up out and put them right on the grease, nigga, and get it, and get it popping. And so along right there, you can see why that was the early hub 
of uh, Africa. You understand what I'm saying? And again, you're going to see not only do we got the freshwater lakes, you see right next to the, and this is Lake Victoria blew up. So you can see right there, Tan Tanzania. You can see right there, Kenya. You can see right there, uh, Uganda is right there. And so if you look at uh, all the way at the top, you see Lake Victor uh, Victoria Nile. You see what I'm saying? That's where the Nile begins. You see what I'm saying? Out of Lake Victoria. Fresh water. Okay? Let me come out of this so I can, so I can, uh. And so this is a very good map right here. Love it. And it shows you, you see again, not just the Nile coming out of that region, but the Congo is also coming up out of the Great Lakes region. So you, you got so many mighty, mighty rivers that, you know, descend out of this Great Lakes region. You got not only the Nile, you got the Congo. In many respects, the Nile and the Congo connect in certain spots. Now, a lot of people would think that Poop is over to the right of the continent, which is the horn, but I believe it is it, it, it extended, you know, not just from the horn, but into the interior of Africa, including down where them Great Lakes was. Okay, all of that was a part of what they call the land of the gods. Okay, and so this is, we're going to show, this is where our family originated. When you're talking about Lucy, okay, they talk about Lucy being a little short. You know, they tried to make Lucy a monkey, which is a damn lie. Okay, Lucy wasn't no damn monkey. Lucy was a twat. And that's the crazy shit about it. Niggas teaching we evolved from a monkey. Well, goddamn it, show me the day where a goddamn monkey can evolve into a human being. And just like anything in nature, how do you shut something off like that? Okay, how did, did, did nature just shut the evolution cycle off to where you can no longer evolve? And shit, if it's a natural law of the universe, it's eternal. Okay? And, now, and so it, it, it's eternal. You so what happened to the evolutionary process? Did it just shut off on motherfuckers? Did who shut it off? Did the universe shut it off? Or the universe don't do nothing like once it's a law of the universe, it applies for eternity. Just like that sun is in its cycle. If it move out of that cycle at any given time. Your ass is out of here and everything on this planet is out of here. So when we understand the, the universal law of opposites, when the sun set, the moon rise and the moon reflect the light of the sun to give us light at night, it's a divine cycle. And so all divine cycles are eternal. So if we evolve, what happened to the evolutionary process? Did it just shut off on our ass? So if it's if it's a evolute if it's a if it's a universal law, it should still be in effect. So we should be a if we say that man came from monkey, we should scientifically be able to prove that which it can't. That's a you you got the ideology of a, a man who was crawling on all fours, come up out of cave, saw himself as a damn monkey, and then he create. A, a, a psychology for your ass as a slave and you adopt it because you didn't know no damn bad. You didn't know no damn bad. The white man don't know where he come from. So you, you're you not in that predicament. We know where we come from. And ain't no nowhere in the sacred writings of our people. And they were writing before anybody. They were civilized before anybody. And nowhere where they say they come from no monkey. So you got to understand that Lucy was a twat. Wasn't no damn monkey. Lucy was a twat. You see what I'm saying? One of them little short Africans. You understand what I'm saying? That were here before anybody. Okay? So we see this process around that Great Lakes region, how they went down the Nile, and they sh what they showing right here, where they went along, that's some bullshit. How the fuck you walking? Our people was on the on the lakes and, and you know they had boats and shit. 
one the, of the cracks in the, I believe that might be the cracks where, you know, you got the uh, Great Rift Valley. You know, for a minute I thought they were trying to show that, you know, our family walked, which they did not walk. But what I'm thinking they trying to show is how, you know, the Great Rift Valley and, you know, the cracks in Africa because of Arabia separating from Africa and from that, the, the destruction that it caused to the land caused it to sink in. And this is where you get them lakes. And right around this area where you're looking at is the highest regions of Africa. These are the mountain regions of Africa, okay? And so you see even in many uh, of the beautiful artifacts that our African people have left us. You see the little twat right there on the boat. You see him sailing down the night. You understand the first peoples on the on the on the planet that created a uh, shipbuilding. You understand what I'm saying? Navigating the planet. They did not walk nowhere. All our, you know, the ancient traditions prove that we were sailing from day one. Okay, we were not on the backs of animals or none of that. Our first transportation was the rivers because Africa has so many rivers. You understand what I'm saying? And these are the highways of Africa. And so when we look, you see bats, you see Pata. Now, I know Pata out there. I, I, have you ever seen the little short Pata? See, people don't know that Pata is a twat. People don't understand that. Okay, you see the taller one. You know what I'm saying, which came much later. The first representation of Pata was as a twat. Okay, so when you see the term Egypt, see this is what the Greeks call the landmass. This is not what we call it. You see what I'm saying? But in their understanding of what the Africans told them, that when you see Egypt, when you look at the PT. On the end, you just add the A-H, which is Pata. It's Egypt Pata. Because our family knew that the Twa was the be, you know, was the original founders of civilization. And you see right there, you see Bess with the leper skin on. See, we 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 talking real shit tonight. See what I'm saying? Because they try to diminish. If you go into the white man's uh mystery books which he called history because all that shit is a mystery to me i don't know what the fuck he's talking about he's talking some dumb shit they try to make fun of the twat and act as if you know they were just you know for uh you know entertainment for the africans which we're gonna prove tonight which is nothing but a felonious lie you see right there with the leopard skin on his back which means that he was also a member or the craft, okay? He was a part of the priesthood because only the priest wore the leopard skin. So he wasn't just there for no goddamn uh, merrymaking, okay? He was a brother of the craft. He was a brother, he was the one who invented the craft, okay? You see right here, these are our beautiful family over there in, in the Congo. So not only around the Great Lakes region, if you look to the map to the right, you see the twa at the bottom near Rwanda and Burundi. You understand what I'm saying? Even uh, uh, the Congo down there by Lake Kivu. You see the twa and not, no pygmy because a pygmy is a derogatory term. You don't call the family a pygmy. You understand? If we say it is only so a, a people could get an understanding because that's the dominant term. But if you were speaking to the family, you should not ever, ever call them no damn pygmy. You understand? We say a twa, you know, uh, misrepresented as a pygmy. But when you say pygmy, people know what it means. And so because, you know, we sometimes we have to use, use these terms to get the understanding across. And then we let family know that that's a derogatory term. And then you see we got the M uh, mbuti, uh Ifa, uh, what they call Twa, you know, near the Aitori Forest, which is in the Congo. So you're talking about the what you call the Garden of Eden, 
because there is no landmass that got two jewels like that, where you got a Great Lakes region of fresh water, and then uh to the uh you know to the west of you, you got one of the world's greatest areas of vegetation, animal life, natural medicine. Uh, you talking about uh the Congo, the the uh the rainforest is the lungs of the planet. You see what I'm saying? And so you got so many thousands of species of animals and so many thousands of species of, of, of vegetation. And, you know, this is one of the, you know, the greatest reservoirs of life on the planet. Okay. And so again, you're looking at some of the areas of the Twa. We just went over the Twa, the Great Lakes Twa. Then you got the Mbuti Twa Ifa. Ife. You see what I'm saying? A uh, Kango, a uh, uh, sewer, and then you go over uh, more west in, into the Congo. You got the Baka and Aka, you know, uh, Twa. Okay, and so they all through that area to show you where the major areas of where the Twa is in Africa today. You understand what I'm saying? And this is the area where the Africans in Egypt and Nubia call the land of the gods. And when we go over it again, that Bess and Ptah are the two oldest deities of the Nile Valley uh, gods and goddesses. Bess and Ptah are the two oldest, okay? So when we talking about when Egypt came into existence, Ptah was the head deity, okay? He was married to uh Sekhmet married to Sekhmet and and, and their son was Kansu and their son was Kansu who was a moon deity later on Imhotep would be deified and, and and was placed into that trinity of Ptah you see what i'm saying was placed into that trinity of Ptah and Sekhmet and i went to the temple at uh at a carnet and seeing that uh, where Imhotep was on the wall, he was on the wall of you know of Karnak along with Sekhmet and Ptah as a trinity. Okay, so it made me understand that you know when you look at Imhotep, you kind of wonder if he was a twat. You see what I'm saying? Because he looked real short when you look at him. You know, even from the uh, even from the uh, statues where you see M Hotel. Now we're dealing with the Congo right here. You see the Congo Basin countries. This is the lungs of Africa, the lungs of the planet. And I'm gonna read this information because we got to get this information. You see what I'm saying? The Congo is the Earth's second largest river. Listen, the Earth's second largest river by volume. It has the world's second largest rainforest. 18% of the planet's remaining tropical forest. The Congo Basin represents 70% of the African con continent's plant cover. See, 70% of the, of the African continent's plant cover and makes up a large portion of Africa's biodiversity with over 600 tree species and 10,000 animal species. We just talking about in that area. We ain't talking about how many species of animals that's on the entire continent? We talking about is over ten thousand animal species just in the Congo Basin rainforest. Okay, the six nations that make up this uh, basin of uh, Congo countries, uh, uh, Congo Basin of countries is Cameroon, Cameroon, the Central African Republic, the Republic of of Congo the Democratic Republic of Con Congo, Equatorial Guinea and Gabon, okay? Which they share 1.5 million square miles of the Congo Basin, okay? Now, we got to break this science down. When we talking about prescription drug, where, this, where these, you know, these healing herbs are coming from? Of course, they, they cutting it with all that poison and shit, but the basis of these, these prescription drugs is coming out of Africa. Okay, some 120 prescription drugs 
So directly from the rainforest plants, and according to the United States National Cancer Institute, more than two thirds of all medicines found to have cancer fighting properties come from the rainforest plants. Okay, now see when that that right there when I was doing that research, I said, well, damn. Motep was, you know, placed into the Trinity with Pata and Sekhmet and Pata being a Twa coming out of this area, you know, showing that our people, the Twa, had access to all of this herbal medicine, you know, hundreds of thousands of years before anybody. You see what I'm saying? That's why we got to also deal with the fact that. Best was also the god of birthing. You understand what I'm saying? When you go to Dendera, when you go to Dendera, the uh, temple of Dendera, right before you get up into the major temple, in the front of that uh, complex is what they call a Mamisi. It's a small temple, and it's a birth. A Mamisi is a birthing house, and so that temple was the uh, birthing house of Horus. You see Isis, and you see Isis giving birth to uh, Horus. You see Amun and the gods coming to give homage to the divine birth of Heru Horus. And at the top of all those pillars in that Mamisi, you see pillars of the god Bess. So god Bess, when, when our African sisters was having you know, were beginning pregnant and, you know, they were about to have their babies. They always gave homage to uh, Bess. And it's, to my understanding, it was the Twa in the south uh, west area of Asia that taught the white people cesarean sex, uh, section where you, you know, you are able to save the child, you know, cut the uh, stomach, that ain't something that white people created. Our people was using that in, you know, under, you know, necessary circumstances. Okay, so they call it cesarean section or whatever, however that's pronounced. That was taught to the European by the Twa of the Southwest Asia. Okay, over there in like Papua New Guinea, over there in that area, the Africans taught them that. So you could see that they were very masterful and very, you know, advanced in medicine and surgery at a very early date. And that's why when you get down to Egypt, they already cutting the body open. They already doing all type of surgeries already. When they mummy find, they already going inside the body. They already understood all the org organs in the body. But the first Africans to master that was the twa. And that's to my understanding, that's why Imhotep, who is the world's first recognized physician, even though they don't teach that his mother and his sister that came were also physicians. So Imhotep mother was a physician. But that's why to my understanding why he, you know, he paid so much homage to Pata because Pata was a twa and that they were the masters of medicine and surgery. You see what I'm saying? Let me move on. So you see right here, this is in the gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt, but this is by Wallace Budge, and here it gives a description of Beth. It says the first god anthropomorphically depicted. So that means this is the first deity as a human being. <laughs> The Twa, best. You see what I'm saying? No other form of a deity as a human being. You see what I'm saying? Depicted as a deity. Before it's none existed before best. It is the primitive human form of Horus One. See what I'm saying? So when you look at ancient Egypt, Egypt is the refinement of a far more ancient spirituality that existed long before Egypt, even Nubia. Best Horus, understand that. 
best horse being the earliest type of the pygmy pata. Hear me out. See, we we going deep today. So when you say Egypt, you got to understand that at the end of Egypt, you see PT and you add the AH Egypt, Egypt Pata. They knew from the very beginning that the founders of Egypt was the pygmy, what they call the twa. They knew that. You see what I'm saying? The history had already recorded that. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, all these mythological teachings that the African or the founders of Egypt came from somewhere else is a bunch of bullshit. That's some people that ain't been listening to the master teachers and have not been directed in the right way to study and the, and the right authors and the right researchers to study to get a proper understanding. Most niggas been taught by e j j like a nigga didn't jip your ass. Or Jude, you know, jip, and you can look that up, jip. When a motherfucker jip, so you got Egyptology. You see what I'm saying? You didn't get you didn't get you didn't get the right teaching. So the human type was not given to any before Pata. Okay, he's the first human deity depicted as a human being. So that the above shows that the ancient Egyptians left an indelible proof in their mythology of their descent from the first human, which was the pig. Come on now. I want y'all to talk to me tonight. Y'all need to go get that book if you need to get it. You understand what I'm saying? They wish that, they wish this white boy right here never opened his mouth. They wish he had never opened his goddamn mouth. And so you need to go to get that, the gods, the gods of ancient Egypt by uh, Wallace Bud. In, in case you need reference from a cracker on the truth of ancient Egypt, that, that don't mean he did the research. He only told the truth of what was told to him, and he could not deny. He could not deny. Even though he told lies in other areas, He but he did give it up right here and tell the fact of what was told to him. He didn't, he didn't do the, you know, like he didn't do uh uh, invented some, you know, he came to the conclusion of himself. This is some shit that was told to him and he knew it was the truth. Now, this is when the Greeks came in. Hear me out? This is when the Greeks came in. Man, my phone just died. I wish it wasn't a dead that because I do. Matter of fact, family, hold a second because I need my monitor. You know, as I'm teaching, I got to have some showing how, you know, I'm, you know, in case some happen to the you know the screen i got to be able to see that so let me get my uh my cord right quick get my phone charged up right quick okay Get a little water. Get a little water. Get a little water. So to keep your psyche together, family, when you say uh Egypt, you should say it out. Egypt Pata. Egypt Pata de Toi. Egypt, you know, that's how you keep your psyche in check. So you, Egypt pata de toi. Egypt pata de toi. Now, this is when the Greeks came in. They didn't have nothing to do with the creation of this, okay? The Africans still created it. But this was doing, and you can see that best is at the top. Now, if y'all was remember when I was showing y'all the pyramid of T.O.T. walking in the, in the Americas, I'm going to get to that. And I showed you best. And I showed you how they had the plumes coming out the top of his head. I want y'all to remember. Look at it. I might have to go and scroll down and bring it right to that. Where you see even over in America, you seen best with his tongue sticking out. And then you seen the plumes of, of, of feathers coming off the top of his head. You see it right here. And so even when the Greeks came in, they understood who was the supreme deity 
And so best is Pata, and Pata is best, okay? Even though they have different aspects of the, you know, the, the, you know, of who they are, they still represent the one divinity or the twa, the little short family in Africa. Because you see right here that they worship best even at the time of the Greeks. And best is one of the most profound deities that you see all over the planet in all religions, you find best. And we're going to deal with that today. Let me keep it moving. Now, now this is the Narmus palette family. We're talking today. We're talking today. I want y'all to get that pen and paper out. This is called the Narmus palette, just in case you want to go look it up. And after that, you see, and Narma came from out the south. Every time Egypt was attacked, every time there was a liberating king, he came from the south. That's it. Norma came from the south. Then uh, Amos came from the south. You understand what I'm saying? In the uh, in the uh, 16th century, Amos came from the south. Every time Egypt needed a, a savior, it came from the south. Because this is where the, the, the civilization originated from. Now, this is Norma, the first king. You see what I'm saying? And you can see right there, you see, he, he then went down there and had to clean up the land. This is when he had to reunite Egypt. People say he, he united. No, he didn't unite the land. He reunited the land because it was already one land. And then there was some, some usurpers that had came upon the land, and he had to go down there and do what a real king is supposed to do and clear the land out. And so you see at the right, you see some bodies with their heads is missing. Their heads is in between their legs. And you see, you see that queen walking before him. You see what I'm saying? She going down there to make sure he didn't do did what he's supposed to do. You see what I'm saying? You see her right in front of him with, with, the, with them locks in her hair. And then in the very beginning, you see what? You see the twa. And you see they got on what? The caps of pata. Look at it. They are the priests at that time. You can see, uh, you see uh, the Heru symbol in the, on the first two totems. Those are totems. You know, those are totems. And then in the middle, uh, behind the two Herus, you see Anubis. Now, the very last is the placenta. That's the placenta of Norma's mother. To show you that the black woman is God. They got the placenta because you can see the umbilical cord hanging down. That's a placenta. You see what I'm saying? That's a placenta. You see the mace in his hand. You see the flail. You see what I'm saying? Now you see him with the crown of lower Egypt because he's conquering, you know, reconquering lower Egypt. But if you flip it on the other side, you see the principal scene where he got on the crown of upper Egypt and the image of Narmon is a is large, superior, far superior and large to this side of the palette to show you that the king of Upper Egypt was the king. He was the king of kings. You see what I'm saying? So right here, we show him from the very first record of Egypt, the Narma palette. You see that the little twa, Bess and Patar, are the head of the priesthood, okay? So they wasn't just there to, you know, like the white people try to say they was there to make music and, you know, and, 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 and you know, make the uh, Pharaoh laugh and shit. This is how they humiliate the twat. You see what I'm saying? To try to make them insignificant. Let's move on. You see them right there, they got on the cap of Pata, and that's the same cap you gonna see on the head of M Hotel. The greatest man that ever walked the planet, Imhotep. My God, my deity, Imhotep. And I pay all homage to Imhotep. You see what I'm saying? Who brought uh, architecture matters. He was the first multi-genius that the world ever known. You see what I'm saying? He was the first multi-genius that the world ever known. Now, I was in, uh, this was in, uh, this was at Sakaba. Right here, I seen this particular uh, glyph, and I got pictures of it too. This is not my particular picture here, but I took pictures of my own 
of this relief right here. This was at Sakara, and this was either at the uh, mosque by a congemony. I think it might have been congemony. And you see what the Africans are doing, the little twa. And if you look, you know, you can see the little triangle in front of the where, you know, down as, you know, as the, a garment. That show you that they were part of the priesthood. They got on the apron, which today you see the Masons try to mimic, falsely mimic what they saw in Egypt. But they'll never be able to duplicate our educational system. So it shows you that they were not just there to fucking make nobody laugh. You see, they making jewelry. If you ever see one of them uh, necklaces that, the, you know, that's what they making right there. And so they were masters of jewelry. They was masters of all type of gems and, you know, coming up out of the interior of Africa. That's where most of the gold mines were. So they was mastering all type of uh, crafts of gold, of all type of precious mineral, precious jewels and all of that. OK. And this is where you get the concept even in so-called Nordic mythology and even into the the myth of Santa Claus, where the elves and the dwarves were the makers of all the great uh, instruments of war and all the great jewels of, of, of even the Nordic gods were created by the dwarves. And this come out of the ancient stories of the dwarves in Africa, which are true, okay? Which are true, but not that, you know, the dwarves that y'all hear about in Nordic mythology, those are the twat. They was up there before the goddamn cracker came. That don't mean they native, but it shows that our people have branched out all over the world. Okay? They have branched out all over the world. Let me get past that. So you see that the priesthood of Egypt, you see the priests wear the leopard skin. So this is just, you know, undisputable proof that the priesthood descended up out of the south. It was our family from the interior, which, you you know, part of that area is called Punk, and it's the land of the gods. You know, not just Somalia, but Punk and, you know, the, the, the Great Lakes region and part of, uh, and, and including the rainforest. So that whole area was called the land of the gods, and you can see because of the richness of where they come from. Again, Sean, this is uh, Tut, too tight common. And you see him with the leopard skin up. So you can see right there that they would have one religion. They was in one priesthood. You ain't never seen no white boy ever in the priesthood of the Nile Valley. Okay, so where they try to make fun of our family, you know what I'm saying? But I pay nothing but homage to all my people. You see that the Twa. The little short Africans up, you know, out of the uh, interior of Africa were the founders of Egyptian spirituality. They weren't just a part of the priesthood. They invented the, the priesthood. OK. And so, again, here we go. We looking at Imhotep. And Imhotep, Ptah was the father of Imhotep. So that shows you something. You understand what I'm saying? You see the cap. I got a better. I got a uh, a better picture of Imhotep. Matter of fact, hold up. Let's get it pop. Uh, uh, uh. I hate that. I hate that. I know what to do. 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 I, I I want y'all because that's that's too powerful. That's too powerful for me not to have up. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. There you go. See, I know he was there. You see what I'm saying? So matter of fact, let me just bring it up. Let me bring it right on up. Let me bring it right on up.
And at this time, I could just drop that down so we can see it all. Right there, the cap that's on the twa head, that's the same cap being worn by Pata. And Pata look like a little short after. He ain't no tall brother. So, you know, that could be symbolism that Pata himself was a twa. You see what I'm saying? But he taking on the traditions of the all father, okay? And people got to understand that when the great pyramids were built, when the great, the largest pyramids was built, the old kingdom, it, the whole of the old, old kingdom, Ptah was the supreme deity, okay? Ptah. So under the, under the worship of Ptah, the greatest monuments that ever been constructed on this planet was built under the worship of this little short God that you see here today. That's profound. I don't see how family don't, you know, and that's all right. If you did not know, you go know today. This is your history and you should know this. This is your history. This is our history. And this is your, you should hold this sacred to your heart, you know, and pass this down. Okay, now again, we're looking at what they call pool land. You see, that's today today's understanding that it's the horn of Africa. We got to understand, you know, that D you got Poon, then you have Oxum, which is a little further up in Ethiopia, Etria, then you have Nubia and Sudan. See, and this was uh districts of power and security on that international waterway that you call the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. This is the most one of the most powerful even till this day. Nothing changes. Okay? And so you had the, the Puntites, so you see them to the right. This is the this is uh under the uh the rule of Hatshepsut. So the the relief that you seeing is at uh uh Dear El, uh, El Badari, okay, if I can show it to you, I might have it up. I might have it up. If not, I'm going to be able to show you where that relief is at. So if, if you have to go and look it up, you know what I'm saying? You could do that. You know what I'm saying? But just, just look it up. Hatshepsut's Shep, funerary temple. And so she says a fleet. Down to Punt. And what you're looking at is uh uh I think they merged. If it's not if frankincense, frankincense where however, you know, whatever tree that is, I think it's a frankincense tree, if I'm not mistaken. You know, and so she went down, you know, she sent her fleets down there to retrieve animals from the south. And you know, and that shows you even now why frankincense and myrrh is. Uh, and I know myrrh comes from the tree too. Both of them are like a, a gum or a resin. And if you just put your hands on there, it gathers on the hand and they ball it up. That's why when you get some of that hard uh, myrrh and that hard frankincense, it's, it's, it's a resin. You know, and they, they put their hand, they collect it and they ball it up. And so you can get it like that or you can get it in an incense form. But the fact that those two... Uh, those very two sacred sets and those two very sac uh, sacred trees, you understand, in the interior of Africa was carried over into even Islam and even into so-called Judaism and all, and just peoples from all over the world that held those, uh, you know, those two sets to be some of the most sacred sets on all the planet because it come out, out of the South out of the land of the gods and you know and this is just more proof to why you know our people in egypt look to the south you know as being a holy land okay again showing y'all now poop land now you're gonna see from from there and you know you you got this waterway and i'm gonna show it e even greater you know let me get let me get this up let me get the military geography up we got to get the military geography up you know what I'm saying? You're going to see Poop was a jump off. 
You know what I'm saying? When they get ready to go to India, you know what I'm saying? You know, Africans coming down the Nile, they got to stop off, you know, along the way. You can't just shoot across. You got to stop over and, and poom. You know what I'm saying? Before you go over. Let me let me get a a, a, a good uh, map. Here we go. Here we go, right here. Here we go. So you see Somalia right there, you see poom. You know what I'm saying? And you see the monsoons that go right over to India, okay? Go right over into China, go right over into J Japan, go right up into what y'all call Mesopotamia or Suma. It was the monsoon that would carry you. And so this was the great international waterway of the ancient world, okay? Of the ancient world. And each nation held a a particular responsibility for each district along that waterway. So you got Egypt down on the Mediterranean. You see what I'm saying? And so when you came up through the poop type, you know, just like today, you got to check in. They were the first layer of defense. You understand what I'm saying? Of defense and management of that waterway coming from India, coming from East Asia. So before you could come up, you had, you know, they would send their they ships out, just like any nation, checking on them ships. What you got? Who are you? You know, checking they, you know, they paperwork to see who they make sure that they say they got what they got on that ship is what they got. And so you in order for you to go up through that waterway, you had to first come through poop. Okay. You first had to come through poop, okay, which is the horn of Africa, okay. And so uh, let me come back to the, and I, and I, matter of fact, let me go and throw that on over here in case I got to come back. You know what I'm saying? In case I got to come back. And as you see, the monsoons were very, very powerful winds that blow towards Asia. And then, they, you know, they reverse itself, you know, they blow towards India, China, Japan, from June to September. And you will see over there, the monsoons also bring a lot of rain. Okay, so that's they, they rainy season. So like I was telling family, you know, in Africa, in the tropics, they don't have no damn winter. They have a wet season. You know what I'm saying? It's still warm. It ain't no damn winter. You know what I'm saying? So you got different, you know, uh, climates in different areas and so we talking about the tropical region and then from september to march they blow back towards africa so if you got large uh imports and shit you you could be bringing elephants you could be bringing heavy you could even be bringing stone carving because you know they you know they shared all type of technology so if they if they emperors or or they kings had requested certain uh you know statues and things from Africa. You understand what I'm saying? This was a the best time to get that heavy, you know, uh that heavy uh imports and exports back and forth from Asia to Africa. Cause that wind was so strong that it just literally blew them damn ships right on across the water. And if you knew the different currents in that ocean, you could literally go to any land mass over there. It was not hard. The only thing is you just had to have the proper ships. You couldn't have those. That's how I knew our people was on large ships from uh, ancient times, you know, to be selling all them heavy, uh, uh, like them, them um, obelisks, and they weighing so many thousands of tons. You can't put that shit on no canoe. You cannot sail. And then many of the blocks that went on the Great Pyramid came from Aswan. And the damn pyramid is in Cairo. Aswan is 800 miles to the south of Cairo. So what the hell are you, you talking about? You selling a hundred ton block? God damn, what, what kind of canoe you going to put that on? So our people have very advanced ship building at a very er early date. You see what I'm saying? Now you're seeing a more broader 
uh, map showing you Samar, and then you see in the whole of the Red Sea. So this is a key indicator because right now today is still probably the greatest waterway, you know, economically in the world, coming from Asia, okay, China, Japan, you see what I'm saying? Philippines, Thailand, Burma, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam Indonesia, Australia, India. And if they want to trade with Europe, they coming up through the Gulf of Aden. If they want to trade with Europe, unless they want to sail all the way around Africa, and we don't give a damn. You can, that's, if that's what you want to do, you can do that. See, that's, the, that's why that waterway is such a major waterway, you know, because they carve what they up in Egypt. If you see that little piece up there, which they call the Sinai Peninsula. If you see where it say Egypt and you see that little piece of water that's between Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula, they got a little, if you see that little line in there, that's the Suez Canal. And that gives you you know, that, that little canal will lead you out of the Red Sea into the Mediterranean Sea. And then you could go straight to Europe. You can go up into the in the Black Sea and go up into Northern Europe. You understand what I'm saying? So for the European and Africa and Asia, you are talking about the most important waterway system in the world. Okay, back back if they didn't have that water system they would have to literally sail all the way over you're gonna have to come out the Mediter mediterranean and sail all the way around africa to get to china and most of the time that's not gonna happen because that motherfucking ship gonna be capsized long before it even get around the, the horn of africa you see what i'm saying they were scared and then you talking about taking down their years to make the goddamn trip, okay? So the waterway of uh, of the Red Sea and what they call the Gulf of Aden is the, the greatest economic waterway system in the world. So that's why we have to, when we say the great civilizations of, uh, of the Nile Valley, we have to also speak of Poon. We say Egypt, we say Nubia, we say Oxum, but we must also say Poon, which is the fourth mighty nation, okay? The most important nation. And it wasn't a mythological uh, land because we got documentation that the Egyptians sent many uh, expeditions down there to that land. And they had a king and a queen. And based on the evidence of the trip, that it was a Nile Valley nation. They worshiped the same. They had the same dress, you see what I'm saying? And the same medunet, okay? That's clear, okay? And even going further, which we're going to get into later this, this week, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with the Africans of uh, the Southeast Pacific. You see what I'm saying? The Southeast Pacific, okay? Papua New Guinea, Banabatu, uh, New Caledonia, all of that was populated by woolly hair Africans. Okay, now today you you see Indonesia, which is nothing but uh the slime eye pale man, because we also got the slime eye, but we talking about the sl the slime eye pale man who is now trying to commit genocide on our African brothers and sisters, showing that the monsoons, the monsoons. Will carry you right on now. See, this is a more uh, uh, a more uh, advanced map showing you a lot of islands that are, you know most maps don't even want to show you because you're gonna find out it's Africans on those islands. And when you talk about Papua New Guinea, I'm talking about full blooded Africans. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, you know, you know how you can have some mixed people, and you look at the curls in their head. And they real fluffy curls. They African, but you know that it's been some mixture in there. Man, you go to Papua New Guinea. Listen here, let me be real with y'all. Them niggas got hair so fucking tight and so woolly. It's they even they beards is tight and woolly. I'm talking about tight than a motherfucker. I'm talking about that shit. 
You can't even put a goddamn, you couldn't perm that shit. That's how woolly it is. You see, when I when I had to get, so you understand, you couldn't even put a perm in that shit. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't even take. That's how, right there in Papua New Guinea. You see what I'm saying? So we understand that our people populated the whole of the South. And the Twa was one of the, if not the earliest, along with what we call the Khoisan, which is out of South Africa uh, area, with the uh, slant in their eyes. And so, you know, they went, were the first to populate over there. And that's probably, you know, through the mixing, you understand, where the Chinese get a little slant in their eye. You see what I'm saying? They went down there, raped our people like they they savages too. You understand? And got a little slant in their eye. So when people look at the Buddha, we're going to get on Buddha. Buddha was an African. Buddha was the Osiris of uh, the Asian world. Okay? And we're going to prove that in the upcoming days, you know what I'm saying, as I teach on that. Now look at here. We look, we, we're getting deep tonight, family. I want y'all to wake up. This is one of our little African twa in India. So you talking about the fucking Indian over there being, the niggas are always talking about who the original man of the land is. Get the fuck out of here. Y'all don't never want to look at the Africans that was there before any of them motherfuckers. Just like these niggas over here talking about Aboriginal and going to go get the beat nose motherfucking Indian and talking about, don't, but don't want to talk about the woolly hair African that was over here before his ass who come from Africa. I'm not talking about no Aboriginal to no, no land. Nigga, they Aboriginal to Africa. That's where they from. You understand what I'm saying? And they migrating all over the planet. But most people never seen this. This look African right here. You know what I'm saying? These were the original people. Woolly head. Okay. This ain't the this ain't no motherfucking uh, straight head Indian. This the woolly head. I, and I got the information coming right behind this to prove the documentation. Okay, so you see right there the little twat. You see, you see the little twat, then you see the imposter right there. That's the little red dot Indian that motherfuckers want to think that's they land. That's they that they native to that land. They're not native to the land. The little twa was there hundreds of thousands of years before they crawled out the cave. I got to talk to y'all today. I got to talk. These are facts. Now, I'm going to get the documentation to prove. This is from B BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, but the, the facts is there. Now, they call the people BOA, okay, B-O-A, okay? Now, listen to this, okay? The last speaker of an ancient language in India's Adamai Islands has died at the age of 85, a leading linguist has told the BBC. Listen, now listen to me now. The death of the woman Boa Senior was highly significant because one of the world's oldest language, Bo, has come to an end, Professor uh, Anvita Abby said. She said that India had lost an irreplaceable part of its heritage. Languages in the atomized are thought to originate from Africa. Okay, some may be up to 70,000 years old. Okay, did you hear that? Up, up to 70,000 years. The islands are called an uh, anthropologist's dream, uh, are one of the most linguistically diverse areas of the world. Now, 70,000, now they just, we just went over, you know, the different nations. Uh, Egypt versus India, and they just told you about some Harappian or Mohenjo, Mohenjo-Daro was at some shit like 3000 BC, the oldest civil. These people's over here 70 fucking thousand years. God damn it. What the fuck is y'all talking about? Some Harappa and some goddamn Mohenjo-Daro and all that dumb shit when the facts is they've been over here damn near 100,000 years before the goddamn Indus Valley. Man, y'all niggas better wake up today, man. Y'all niggas got to wake up today. Listen to this. It is generally believed that all Adamanese languages might be the last representatives of those languages which, which go back to pre-Neolithic times. Did you hear that? Pre-Neolithic times. Shit, you know what I'm saying? That's way back. Motherfuckers say, hey, Seti, when is pre-Neolithic? Lithic times. That's way back, nigga. That's so far back. Ain't nobody but us. 
And so when you're looking at the Adamai Islands and Nicobar Islands, that's past India. Do y'all understand that? Okay, I, I'm gonna get, I might have to get a let me get a better map. I want y'all to see this. You see, when you talk about the Adamai Islands, you see over here in the what they call the Bay of Bengal. Man, Adam, Ad, the Adamai Islands is over here. You understand what I'm saying? Past India. Past India. Past India. God damn it. I want to talk to y'all today. You see what I'm saying? It's past India. And so you got the Twa. And so how the hell you think they got on that island? How you think they got on that island? They got on there by boats. They came from Africa and they were on boats. You know, and we're going to show that they even went to Japan, family. We talking today. And nobody dropped. So now this is uh this is uh from Tasmania. This is the last of the Tasmania. What's the sister name? I forget her name. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get a name. I should know that, and I, I I'm gonna get a name. But you can see that they murdered all of the Tasmanians, wicked motherfucking British. And I'm gonna say it just like that. You don't like it, goddamn it, too goddamn bad. Went over there and murdered all our people. That's why we got to quit being soft on these goddamn crackers. Because you think that your ass can't leave up off of here and you can. And they went over there and committed a total genocide. But you see, now where you talking about, you talking about Tasmania is up under. If you look down where Australia is, you see Tasmania. And so you see the little twa right there is right there from Tasmania. So you talking, now let me see if I can see the Adamai Island. See, if you see, uh, if you see up, look up at where India at is in the green, okay? Everything in green around it belongs to India. So if you see them little two islands out there in the Bay of Bengal, if you, wait a minute, I could, I could show you from here. Okay, over here, you see them two islands. That's the Adamai Islands and the Nicobar Islands, okay? So we talking about they pass India, okay? We ain't talking talking goddamn facts. Now the question is this: This this gonna go to all that evolution shit. How the fuck did our people evolve into anything when they look exactly how they look when they left Africa? They didn't evolve. They look exactly today as they look before they left Africa. They ain't evolved into shit. Okay, wherever them people came from, I'm I don't know and don't give a goddamn. I don't need to know where, I know where they didn't come from, and that's all I need to know. I know they didn't come out of Africa, and I know they didn't come out of the southern regions. We know they came from behind them fucking mountains. Now, in order for you to know exactly where, you had to been up in the cave with his ass. We know he came out them damn caves. Now, how he got up in there, and I don't put that beast on the African woman or African people for shit. You going to claim some wicked shit like that? What's wrong with you crazy ass Negroes? Niggas gone crazy. Wake the fuck up. So you see right there, you know, our people, even in Japan, they talk about the little twat. Even in Japan, they talk about the little twat. You know what I'm saying? So right here, you see, this is what they call the last of the Tasmanians. These were the last three of the Tas. There's no longer a Tasmanian a lot. And you see right there, what's on their hair? Woolly hair, not straight hair, not big fluffy curls, that shit laying on the top of his head, woolly headed Africans. I wanna talk to y'all today. Now, this is so beautiful to prove my point, okay? And why am I saying this? Why am I saying, cause you see these are twa, right? Now you look in the face of them twa right there, look in them. Look like sisters, right? Look just like sisters. That's, you know, and they are sisters. But the one from the right is from the Philippines. And the one from, to the left at the bottom is from the Congo. So that right there proved that they won people because they look exactly alike. Matter of fact, their eyes is exactly the like. Their face structure is exactly the like. Lip, lip and all. Lip and all, same head. You see what I'm saying? So that proves right there that they won people from all around the globe. 
okay? Again, showing our, our little African peoples. You understand what I'm saying in age? Now, what you're looking at right here is the predominant area where they didn't, they got full documentation. Now, when you go into Asia, they call them uh, the Negrito, okay? The Negrito, okay? And you can see it all in Burma, huh? All in Thailand, huh? All in Southern China. So when I say that we were the Nagas, huh? You think I'm making shit up, nigga? Wake your silly ass up all through Asia. That's us. That ain't nobody. That was us. The people you see there today is motherfucking invaders. They're not the original peoples of the land. They're not the original peoples of Malaysia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Japan, all of that. Then you see right there the Adamai Islands. You see what I'm saying? Past India. Past. Now, if they look at that, how did they get over there? How did they get on them islands? Huh? You think they swam? You think they swam from goddamn Africa? Even if between India that's a, at least a thousand damn miles from India. Okay? Look like it could be five, six hundred miles from Thailand. How they get there? Okay? Some niggas say, would say, oh, they native. Oh, uh, they have, how the fuck is somebody gonna grow up on the island and be native to a fucking island? You fool. They migrated. They migrated from Africa there. Okay? And so you see it right here. This is a, 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 showing how the twa went all over the world, starting in Central Africa and migrating. And we're going to get into the Grimaldis of Europe before I get out of here. We're going to rock tonight. Going to rock tonight. Been missing, y'all. You understand? I ain't been on, on the internet teaching in a couple of days, so I want to make sure that I rock the house tonight. Showing, but see how they show our family walking? They ain't no, no, they not walking. What motherfucker going to walk three goddamn continents? Quit playing with me. How the hell you think they, and then they show you, and then they got enough nerve to at the bottom show them going from Australia to goddamn South America. How they do it? On the motherfucker, they swam. They was on major ships. And so our people not like the European. We didn't walk. We had created, we was on the Great Lakes with ships. We had already created large ships. Let me get my monitor back up, family. Rocking tonight. Rocking tonight. Hold up. Let me get my monitor back up. In case somebody got something silly to say. I could dig right on off in your goddamn chest tonight. Dig right off into your chest. I got to say this. See what I'm saying? To show you that we rule and, you know, but we all understood the motherland. And from that, we carry much of the Nile Valley culture and the African culture in the Asia. And we're going to prove it. In the next four days, I'm going in every fucking day. Goddamn, before I get up, I go to sleep tonight. I'm putting up two more goddamn to show y'all where we're going with this. Goddamn it, I ain't playing no goddamn. Let me get my monitor back up. Hey, baby, turn me on in case I go off. You can tell me I ain't on. You hear me? All right. All right, I'm in the house. I'm on the monitor. Thank you. See, my monitor was down for a minute, and I got I got to be able to see. Okay, everything is good. Okay, let me keep it moving. Again, showing you the greater area, and they're not showing you all the area. You see what I'm saying? You see Negritos at the bottom? Write that word down, Negrito. When you look it, you look it up, and just put it on, Google it, and go into images and look at your beautiful African family. You understand? We go and put it in Papua New Guinea and put it in and look at the pictures of you, just looking at them and seeing how beautiful your family is. Is empower, is empowering to show you that you got beautiful family all over the planet, and they, you know, they look beautiful. You understand what I'm saying? We honor that. We ain't got time to play no games with no whack-ass Negroes with a Negro history. You see what I'm saying? Let me keep it moving. So this is the little woman of, of, of Adamant. You see? And you see Patai at the, at the top. That's the great God. 
the first God of the planet Earth. You understand what I'm saying? The black woman is God. You see what I'm saying? She's God. You understand? It wouldn't be no Pata if it wasn't the black woman. Pata came through the black hole. Okay? That's why you got some, You understand? There's always the feminine principle. You understand? Always. You can't have no God without no God. And every God that got here came through the womb of an African woman. Okay? Understand that. I don't know nothing on this planet. Who, you know, and as, as we talking about the African man, if you got a belly button, nigga, you, you was connected to an African woman. You understand what I'm saying? So that means that a woman preceded every man that's on the planet. That's facts. Even, it's a, even though we understand it take a man and a woman that, to create a child today. Understandably, the enigma is that every man got a navel, which means every man was preceded by a woman. And even though we got two understandings that it takes a male and a female to create a child, we still have the enigma that a woman preceded every man that got here. So, you know, that's a hell of an enigma. That's a hell of an enigma. That means every man that's on this planet got to yield to a black woman. That's it, nigga. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, nigga. Wake up tomorrow. Get it right. If you got it wrong today, get it right. You understand? Your mama was preceded you. Okay? So every nigga on this planet got a mama. The black woman is God. Deal with that. Okay? We dealing, we dealing with Negro, uh, Negritos all through. And you can see this is a more extensive. Showing you different populations all through the South you know, you know, the Southeast Asia, okay? And it even goes up into Japan, okay? This right here is the Philippines, okay? Where you get Naga, you see what I'm saying? You got even got Naga, and it, it ain't nothing but Africans up in there. Ain't nothing but the Twa up in there. You see what I'm saying? Japan, okay? Nagasaki, okay? You know, Nagasaki. And then you got uh Shanghai, which is Songhai, okay? Shanghai which is song high, okay? The Naga is the African. We the original Naga, okay? This is uh up in Malaysia, you know, uh, Simaj, or uh, uh, Simaj, or Simaj, okay? The Malaysian Negrito. She's one of those African tribes. Woolly hair, that's up there in Thailand. So y'all keep looking at the Bruce Lee looking as Thai Taiwanese. Them is the invaders. In each one, you see the Thai Negrito. You see, that's the more uh, light brown color. And then you got the uh, uh, the, the Burmese uh, Burmese Negrito. They they further to the north. And then you got another, all of that. The whole damn island is damn uh, Negrito. Okay, the Negritos of the Philippines. Of the Philippines. You're looking at it right. Them is African. Woolly-haired African. Not the straight head, not the red dot, not none of that. So we come here, those are the twat of Asia. They the first people to populate the whole planet. Sick of y'all. Wake up today. And so you got right there. And this is in uh this is in the Philippines. You got at the bottom, it got Negros Oriental. And then at the top, it got what they say, Negros Occidental. Accident, what the fuck you mean? You accidentally found some Africans and shit that and you thought it was just, you know, I guess you thought it was vacant. And then you accidentally found some Negro. Say, goddamn, everywhere I go, I accidentally find some Negroes on the lake. Okay, so they got the Negrito, which is twa. That's twa. Okay, I want y'all to be clear about that. When they say Negrito, they talking about the little short people. They're not talking about the taller Africans. They're talking about the little short people. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I'm about to go deep now because we're talking about Japan. We're talking about J Japan. We're talking about the samurai. Am I all right out there? Is family all right out there? Okay. Get, get, let's, let's work, baby. We working. We're talking about the samurai. And they in, in, in the uh, history of the samurai, they say that you got to have one drop of black blood. I don't understand that. How the fuck you gonna have one drop of black blood? Motherfucker, you got to have more than one drop. How the fuck you gonna get one drop? Motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying? But that just proves that the original samurai 
was African, and we're going to work today. You see what I'm saying? You can see at the top, if you see sometimes, you know, other people use different types of animals to depict the necessary mythology of Africa where, you know, they might not uh, worship the same animal. Okay, so the cow horns were used in Africa to show that uh, it was sacred to have a root. And you see the sun disc right between the horn. So now this is very key because soon as I saw this, I say, damn, you can see the headdress on Bass. You can see the chest plate on Bass. You can even see the lower, uh, the lower uh, uniform of the samurai on on this bass. So when I looked at it, I said, "Damn!" When you look at the top, they use the antlers of a of a deer. But you see, the sun is right there in the middle. Wait a minute. So when you get over here, look at the chest plate. You can even see the uh, the the phallus plate that comes down and pro protect the phallus. Okay, I'm gonna come over here so you can see it. You see the damn armor on him? He got on the damn samurai uniform right there. I'm sick of this shit, man. This is who took that to Japan. And that's why they say you got to have one drop of black blood because the original samurai that took the Montu art into Asia, you could go right there to Minahabu and see over 120 uh, kicks, blocks, and throws right there. Go look at it. Go look it up, the martial arts in Egypt, and go and look in Sudan where they wrestle and they box. You're going to see that all those arts came out of Africa long before the goddamn Chinese was even on the planet. I'm sick of y'all always honoring Bruce Lee. Man, you take Bruce Lee into the Sudan, you will never see that little Chinese ever again. They would have beat the shit out of Bruce Lee. Y'all honor, oh, he's the god of motherfuckers. And, just, and motherfuckers don't even understand that Bruce Lee ain't never was in no competition at all. Silly ass nigga. Y'all ain't got no documentation that all that goddamn acting and shit would do a motherfucking thing. Okay, let me, well, he wasn't in no goddamn martial art contest and kick everybody ass. Y'all just get a motherfucker to homage. You see what I'm saying? Because y'all always venerating something other than your own. I'm sick of y'all. Okay, so you can look at every, and I put the plate on them to show, and you can look right over at the samurai. You see the horns on his head. You see the sun disc in between the horns. You can look at the chest plate, which you can see on, and you can see even the, the helmet is around his ears. I'm talking about best. You can see that it's around his ears. You can even see it at the top of his forehead. He got the armor on. You can see it around his face. You can see it across his chest. You, even, if you look at the samurai and you see the uh, the phallus plate to protect a motherfucker from kicking you in your phallus, he even got the uh, the uh, the protection over his knees. Look at the shit. I'm sick of this shit. Look at that. Okay. And so when you're looking at the uh, the Maori tribe, and this is in New Zealand, family. This is in. Wait a minute. Let me bring this down. I need a map. I'm in the map. I need the map. Let me bring this shit down. Anybody out there that was looking dead, I looked dead at him the first time I saw it. I said, man, look at that right there. That's a damn samurai. I didn't need nobody to tell it to me. Or nothing. That ain't what I wanted. Where is them? I just had them maps. I, I just want to bring my maps down right here. This is what I want to do. Hold up, family. Let me bring them down a little bit because I'm going to need them. I'm going to need them. I'm going to need them. I got to bring them on down a little bit. Okay, so when I, as I move along, I ain't got to come all the way back up here to deal with. All right, drop it right on in. Okay, and I'm back up, back up. So you see right here, he's sticking his tongue. And so you see Bess is the Lion King, okay? 
He's also the Lion King. And so you're going to see that this is a, a, a the tongue sticking out is in Africa, what they call divine speech. You niggas who caught up into the Hindu call it, you know what I'm saying? It's words of power. It's speech. It's right speech. It's the speech of a king. It's the speech of a God, that which you speak. And so we use the lion. Wait a minute. Am I there? Let me make sure I'm there. Am I in the house? I'm in the house. Good. I better be in the house. Okay. And so you see right here, even the uh, the facial paint that's on best. You see, they didn't took that. They didn't took the whole goddamn program from a, this is in the old Mac character. Okay. So when I said that best is the most worldwide venerated deity, that's exactly what I mean. Right there, what you call my college, okay, in India, is only a representation of the God best. Okay, let me keep moving on, okay? And so here you see the lion. You see, when that lion roar, you see what I'm saying? The words of righteousness should be like the roar of a lion. It should move the African people spiritually. It should be, the roar should be in righteousness and right teaching and right and divine speech. That's what it means. Negroes call it the throat chakra. You understand? Because they want to be the Hindu, but they don't understand that we taught the Hindu how to walk on two, two legs. He was crawling around like his Caucasian brother. So now you got this crazy, ignorant, ignorant, dumb motherfucker to the right. He don't know what the hell he doing. He just over there showing off for the people. Ain't got no idea, just a buffoon, a damn fool over there then took an uh, attribute of Africa and he don't even know where it come from. You talking about confusion and people I got enough nerve to say that these people is one of the oldest peoples on the planet. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Nigga, shut up, lie. You see what I'm saying? So you see right here, best as the lion of Kush. Thousands of years before Judah or the conquest of India by the, you know, of India by the Kush shots. Okay, let me keep it moving. Here now, this is another indicator because you see here that Best got the lion mane around his face. He's symbolically the lion. And when you look at the representation of Best right here in India, I want y'all to see them. You see them eyes as the M. I want I'm gonna go back to that because I'm gonna blow that up and show y'all that that's best. You, and you see the lion mane around this Indian misrepresentation of Bess. Okay, let me keep it moving. I got two. Now this is Bess in, in Greece. Okay, see them almond shaped eyes. You see them 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 eyebrows in the form of an M. Look at it. I want. I'm gonna show you the top one in Africa. Okay, I'm gonna show you the one in India. I mean in Greece. I want y'all to see that. To show y'all that they got the same type of eye. This is not no goddamn game. That's best. That's best right there. That's best. That's who it is. Taking it all the way back to Africa. And so you see the eyes on the Maori tribe in, in New Zealand. And you see the eye on the one in damn Greece. It's the same deity. Okay. Now the one in the middle is the one from T.O.T. walking right down there in Mexico. You see the M coming across his eyes, shaped D octal in the almond shaped eye. That's best. Okay. Now look at the plume. See the one at T.O.T. You see the plume coming out his hair. Now, wait a minute. Fuck that. I'm gonna bring it down. I don't play no motherfucking game, nigga. I, when I say I'm the greatest, nigga, I am that. I don't back shit. You don't see no motherfucker going across the world like I do, nigga. And 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 put the facts up. You cannot get no scholar to go across the whole of the fucking world like I be doing and showing you multiple practices, cultural aspects of Africa all around the goddamn world. Where at? And these niggas out here, you got to know the whole world, okay? Now look at this. Wait a minute. Look at this. Let me bring it down so you can see the plumes. Let me show you the plumes. Fuck that. I'm going to blow it up. 
I ain't got time to play. I ain't got time to play. Let me blow it up for you. Matter of fact, I'm gonna delete this one. Matter of fact, what well, this is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna quit playing. I'm gonna quit playing. So you can see the plume even greater. Because I got some up. I got some up. So you can see the plume. Now this is from down there in Mexico at TOTY. I just want you to see that it's just not one. See the plumes? See the plumes? Now, on this particular one, you can see the eyes. See, on this one, you can see the eye. You know, so best change, and you know, they had different, you know, representation of best. But right there, you see the eyes. You see what I'm saying? Right there. I'll blow that up. Matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll leave that one there. What I'll do is I, 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 boom. And then what I'll do is I'll take that out of there just so you can see the plumes. And what I'll do is take that one out of there and uh, give me this. And I'll bring this one down. You see? Boom. And I'll blow it up for the eyes so you can see. You know, it go right in with the rest of them. If you want, you know what I'm saying? It go right in with the rest of them. So you see those are the eyes of Beth. So you got the you got the eyes, you got the M saturations, you got all of that, and you got the tongue sticking out with the plume. With the plume. So I when I seen it, I say that's best. Right there in Mexico. Now, how the fuck did Best get in fucking Mexico if the Nile Valley Africans didn't bring it over there? God damn, man. And you got these silly ass niggas over here talking about, you know, and I have to keep saying that. I'm talking about all over the world. Now, I'm not just talking about here in America's motherfuckers in every land mass swear the motherfucker that dare today is the original peoples of the land, and that's a goddamn lie. Fuck that. I'm tired of these Negroes. Tired of. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me bring this down. Let me bring this down. Okay? Let me bring this. So when you go in here, and now you already know. I don't even have to explain it to you no more. I don't even have to explain it to you no more. And you see the four sons of Hey Ru, which I, I went over. But now look at this. Now this is what you call upholding the heavens. You will see four pillars or four brothers holding the heavens up, representing the four pillars of heaven. Now, when you come to the old, you see the little twa holding, these are the little twa Omex, okay? Showing you, there is no other people with a, a twa segment of they people. Africans is the only one that got a segment of the people that's all short people. Now, they might have a dwarf, they might have a, you know, they might got some short, but they ain't short as the twa. Okay? So you see right there that the little twa, this is a ceremonial altar. And you see the little twa holding up, and you see it in Asia too. So when I get ready to show something, I can show you the cultural expression in five, six motherfucking cultures all over the goddamn planet. I don't just show you no one damn culture. I show you where it's the dominant culture on the planet. This is global African supremacy, nigga. This not no, and so unless you ate and then studied the whole globe like General Sauer, nigga, your arms is too short to box with God, nigga. Straight up. Now we talking, now you see him holding, holding up the, now this is the little, this is uh, Buddha. But they don't tell you this is Pata. This is Buddha. As per top. Now you see, you see the uh uh Buddha holding up the at the top, you see uh shoe holding up the he heaven, the ark, and you see the ark of Ra, and you see that uh the uh rectangle that he's holding up. That's some that's a symbol for heaven, and you see the boat going across with the boat of Ra going across the celestial heavens. Okay, and you can see it, you know, in India, you see it. And with the Buddha, you see it with the old Max, it's all across the damn culture of the world. Okay? So again, now you look up at the top, you see Pata, and you see the Twa next to Pata, 
was from Angkor Wat, Cambodia. Okay, then you see, you know, Bess again. Then the one on the end is from uh, Tibet. Again, at the bottom is the old Mac. Now the one next to the bottom oh, is another that's uh, on the sarcophagus of Pakal, the Mayans. So they was there even when the Mayans was. And then you see again the black little uh, Buddha as Pakal. Because, you know, that's all that it is. So now look, now the best was also a deity of merrymaking. But see, they tried to, you know, uh, show best that as that's all he was, which is a damn lie. That's not all he was. OK, I'm showing you that he was many things. And so you see in the Congo where they dancing. You see the little twad that, and just like in the ancient, in, in the ancient time, you see him with a tambourine in his hand. If you go to uh, the uh, temple of Philae, you will see him with the bagpipes. Man, listen here, the Africans invented the damn bagpipe. Motherfucker talking about some goddamn, uh, you know, Irish and all that. That's why they killed the damn the twelve in Ireland and called them. Leprechaun. Leprechaun. And they got the bagpipe today. And you can go see the bagpipe on the walls of ancient Egypt. Now the twa in the back was from Rome. That one was from Rome. And you can see that they, you know, they brought dancing to the music. They was the gods of not Mary, but the gods of music, the instruments. You understand what I'm saying? They invented the damn instrument for, for music. And so they, they made this old fat little uh, Buddha, bald head. That's Pata. Look at, wait a minute, let me get to it. I, 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 I make, I make a, uh, man, matter of fact, fuck that. Let me put that old fat fucker on in there. I might as well go on and put him on in there too. Because that's what he is. When you put him in there, you will see that the bald-headed Buddha is nothing but Pata. There it is. I'm going to blow it up for y'all. Look at it. Anybody got a problem, speak or forever hold your motherfucking peace. Okay? Speak or forever hold your peace. Now we're going to go into Europe. Now when y'all talking about the Grimaldis, and y'all talking about, and they got up there, they talking about the Venus of Willendorf and all of that shit. Ain't no goddamn Venus of Willendorf. That's the African, you see that? That's the woman, Twa. That's, a, that's the small uh, female Twa, or what they call the Negrito. And you can see that they was all through Europe. Look at this. Estimated to have been made around 28,000 to 25,000 BC. Damn. So the European wasn't even that in there at that goddamn time. Okay? So you're talking about uh, Willendorf. You see it right there. It's right there, I uh, think, in the Czech Republic. Austria. No, it's in Austria. But if you look right up under the Czech Republic and Austria, you'll see Willendorf. And you see, you see the woolly hair Negrito, the woolly hair twa that had even went up into Europe. So at this time was the dominant people on the planet. The twa was the dominant people on the planet. So they found this one right here, and they always show them uh, with uh, big buttocks, because you know how the sisters come. That's just how it is. You understand what I'm saying? That's just how it is. But this is a fertility doc okay this is a for showing that this was a a, a veneration and, and a homage to birthing and procreation you see what i'm saying so when you see that pregnant african woman and the guy about to have his you know the queen is, is about to get a god resurrection you know i'm about to come back again and it's a blessing you know what i'm saying you this is why you worship the black woman you understand no way you can resurrect Unless she resurrect your ass. You see what I'm saying? Other than that, nigga, 
When you die, you dead. The only way you resurrect is of an African woman bless you with child. You understand what I'm saying on this plot? That's your resurrection. You see what I'm saying? And so the Africans always venerated childbirth. That's why when you go, when we went back to uh, the Narmas palate, you see that he had up on the totem what? His uh, placenta with the unbiblical core because the black woman was God. So you see right here at 29,000 BC, 25,000 BC, you see right there, the old, the oldest, uh, where they say Pata is the old, but the white man as a man, that's the oldest deity on the planet, statue. You understand what I'm saying? But the Venuses is even before the man. You see what I'm saying? So. That's correct when you speak it in the right, you know, context. Bess and Pata is the oldest form of the God, the masculine deity on the planet. But the African woman even came before that. These are the oldest statues on the planet of a deity. And these are the uh, fertility uh, statues, uh, the small little fertility statues of the African woman. Now look at this, where they find them at. Look at that. Look at that. All through goddamn Europe, all through, you know, through, uh, you know, even into what you call Israel and all of that, all that. And they got them in Africa too, but they didn't want to put it up there because you, you would make the connection. You would make the connection. Got them all over in Asia too. So you see right there, the, and so you see the Adam, Adam and Eve's little twa and you got to see her you understand because african women is cut like that you know what i'm saying they got large legs and large buttocks and you see it in the statue okay we got to make that understanding so you can when they try to show you a little white woman you know goddamn one well ain't no white woman got no back like that never did never will they could put all the silicone and all that shit in they had and they didn't have no silicone at that damn time, okay? And so you see, again, right here, even in China, you see the fertility dials of the African woman. Now look at this, look at this. Now they found this one, if I'm not mistaken, in France. This is another Venus, okay? Now look at the hairstyle on that Venus. Now this is 25,000 years old. Look at that. Yep, that one in France, 30 to 15,000 BC. And you can see it's nothing but the hairdress of the African. That right there is our most, is that our most Nefertiti? Oh, that's, that's our most, that's our most Nefertari. If that's not our most Nefertari, that's Nefertari, the wife of Ramesses II. Okay, so you see that that hairdress, that particular hairdress was in France at 30,000 years BC. So how the fuck is you going to tell me that Egypt started 3,000 BC? Somebody lying some goddamn where y'all niggas better wake up today. Okay? Again. And so they call this a disease. Well, goddamn it, this is a hell of a disease to have. Step, what they call it? Step of whatever the shit they call. I don't even want to pronounce the shit. So you see. Right there, where the you know where the sisters is built like that, you know that's how they come. And so you see on the group on the Grimaldi Venus that you see the large buttocks. You see that, okay? That's that's a trait that's particular to the African woman. And it's speaking on there. Say Grimaldi Venus with typical stego of of, of figure buttocks, okay? On the Mediterranean shore. East of the French Italian border, 30 to 25,000 BC, and you can see she got an afro on her head. Okay? And so the white woman knows she didn't have one. So that's why they started making them goddamn dresses with that goddamn wire in the back. That's why they started making what they call buttresses and shit. You understand? Trying to mimic the African woman, knowing damn well she ain't had one. Right there is why they make the buttresses to 
make it look like they got some ass back there and knowing it ain't nothing but wire and shit back there to fool a motherfucker. Okay? So family, I, you know, let me go back. Let me come out of this. Cause I didn't hear I didn't hear family with the main portion. I'm gonna go over my highlights. I'm gonna go over my highlights. I'm gonna go over my highlights. What we dealt with today. And so we're dealing with the magical dwarfs of Africa that went all over the world, populated, was the dominant population on the planet for a very long time. The first of our family that globally circumnavigate the whole planet, okay? From the Americas, from, the, from Africa to the Americas, to Europe, to the furthest extensions into Asia, China, Japan, Indonesia, Australia, uh, Tasmania, India. We saw it all, showed that the, the language of the Twa, the Negritos, is the most ancient language in the land. They are the first inhabitants of Asia, Southern Asia. You understand what I'm saying? Was the, you know the in you know the ones that created Egypt, Nubia, brought the the priesthood from out of the south of Africa down into Egypt. You seen the leopard skin of Bespata, which is a fundamental uh characteristic of the priesthood in Egypt, and not just in Egypt, all across Africa. You see many of the chiefs wear the leopard skin and that come originally up out of the uh, core of africa predominantly where the twa come from okay they you know they lived in the congo rainforest many of them still that's where they you know the, their homeland today is in the congo right around the great lakes region this is the land of the gods okay Poon is also a part of the land of the gods, okay? It's not the whole area, but it's a portion of the land of the God. And that's why I, you know, discuss Poon today, which is a, a part of the holy land, you know, of Africa. Africa, all of Africa is holy. But even to the Africans, the interior was the holy of holies. You know, you got the temple the whole sacred temple of Africa, but the holy of holies. You know, as you go deeper and deeper into the temple, you know, the most sanct inner uh, the most inner room is the sanctuary. And that's where you put the statue of the deity. So as you go up the river into the interior of Africa, the interior of Africa, that's where the gods resided. And that's where you find the two oldest deities of the Nile Valley, Bess and Ptah, along with the worship of the African woman, okay? is the, That's the foundation of the Nile Valley religion. When you see Narma, you know, the first king of Egypt, you see that the priest was the little Twa. We also see that Imhotep was deified and his father, was Patamotep live? The Romans deified M M Hotel and made him the god of medicine. They call him Asclepius. Okay, you can look that up. That's M Hotel. So they came two thousand years, three thousand years after the life of M Hotel and deified him and made him the god of medicine. Okay, so he not only did he construct the uh the pyramid of Zosia at Saqqara, okay? He was also the god of medicine and many uh, uh, medical advancement is dedicated to Imhotep, which shows that the Nile sisters live right now today. You understand what I'm saying? Is no doubt that we gotta pay homage and do more studies on our little African brothers and sisters, one of the earliest parts of our people to exist on this planet so family i'm gonna be black again tomorrow i felt good today i felt i had a beautiful teaching today i felt that i got my point across 
and y'all take this and I'm guaranteed, just go behind me and do more research. And when you come back, throw it in the chat. This is supposed to be the pop in this fucking chat. I don't want no chat with niggas just in there and, you know, fuck all that. Nigga, come in and drop some science in that motherfucker. Say, oh, yeah, and discuss, and, and, and let's make this the most intellectually advanced chat room on the goddamn planet. When you come over, I don't want no nigga job chat. Nigga, go, while I'm in here teaching, nigga, be on the internet at the same fucking time. Go on and, oh, and, and drop some science in there. You know what I'm saying? To spread with the people. So this is really a platform for the people to come get all type of knowledge about self and the advancement of self. If we all partaking it in, in into the uh, intellectual process and helping to teach each one, teach one, then this is really a hell of an experience for our people. So I love you. Thank you for coming out today. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to put in, uh, a, before I even lay it out, I'm going to have two more uh, for the next couple of days. So I'm going in four days straight. I might go five. Well, I ain't taking no fucking days off. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to teach. The ancestors say teach. I heard them tell me in my sleep. They say teach, Sadie. And I woke up, I said, God damn it, I'm damn going here today, ancestors. And then they told me to teach. And so I feel like I got to do at least four, five days straight. God damn it, nothing but hardcore teachers waking up the family. So again, let me go to the chat and see how everybody doing. See how everybody doing. Before I get up out of here. They got me buffering, y'all. Okay. Give me, give me a grade today. When I had to have my students for a grade, I had to get, give me my grade for the day. Thank you, Pata. This was, uh, this was an honor of Pata Amira today, the great God. Honor of Pata, the great God. Respect, respect to all my family out there. That's what's up. Okay, family, I'm going to get ready to uh move on for the night. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all see me. I got my baby cup and shit. Got all look. You know what I'm saying? They say, Seti, what you doing with that little baby cup? All right, family, I'll see y'all tomorrow. This is the general side, Rod Susan Seti, saying, hey, arm yourself with knowledge. Bang on that wicked-ass beast daily. Liberation through African education and confrontation. Black power.